A custom computer build can reflect your individual taste, but parts in a certain color, even white, are hard to get. I have a blue phone, but you wouldn't know it when it has a case over it. So why don't we have colored cases for computer parts? See, new graphics cards from Nvidia and AMD have just dropped and simply trying to find one that you want is hard, let alone finding one in the style and color that you want. New GPU time! ASUS yeah. have sent me their new Tough 5070 Ti oh, oh, graphics card. Oh, oh. I've never had something this powerful, but it doesn't match my PC. And the rep said they don't even make a white version of this series yet. And he was like, maybe you can try and do it, yourself. So to make this interesting, I've given myself two rules. One, try not to avoid warranty. In the past, I had spray painted my graphics card, which involved pulling it apart. So we'll try not to do that. And rule number two is to use free software. I want to prove to you that you don't need expensive subscriptions and that you can make cool stuff with free stuff. Well, I don't, like I don't know why I'm so surprised. It wasn't as easy as I thought. Bro. It's not gonna fit. But I eventually figured out a way to do it that hopefully doesn't reduce performance. So let's get 3D printing to make what we can get match what we've got. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry. As you could use today's sponsor, PCBWay.com. We can simply upload your files, select a material, color, and quality for an instant quote to be 3D printed and shipped to you. On top of a custom PCB, they can CNC as well as other advanced manufacturing methods. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. I haven't done this before, but to make a case that wraps around the existing contours without blocking fan holes or exhausts, I can think of a few steps. Step one, grab some photos of each side for tracing later. Step two, impatiently install in my computer. Yeah, the fans vid for a sec. 5070 Ti, let's go! Making step three, trying to get measurements of the card whilst it's mounted to my computer. Oh yeah, and before my calipers go flat, as I guess that's why they're blinking at me. Either way, I suggest doing measurements unmounted, but I was just very excited. Dude, I have 16 gigabytes of VRAM now. Do you, do you understand? 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I had 12 which was already astronomically good compared to the eight that I had, but now I've got 16. That's insane. Step four, begin 3D modeling in TinkerCAD. Now this is free software. It's super easy to learn. Shapes can be a solid or a hole. And when you group them together, the hole cuts out of the solid. So I enter the dimensions of the graphics card into a rectangle, then align some holes for the fans. Thing is, the fans have a raised lip and it joins together. So I'll need to reproduce this so that my cover plate can fit over top. And finally, I cut away from the sides so it matches the real thing. Prototype. This is gonna be quite snug. Let's see how far off I was. Hmm, that point's correct. The length can be longer. Unless it's different. Oh, it is different. <laughs> I only measured the top and I just thought that'd be the same. I'm gonna trace the photos in Inkscape. This is vector editing software like Illustrator, but free. And it's in the photos, we can see the plastic on one side is longer than the other, due to no circuit board behind the third fan. The problem is, when I made a rectangle to the scale of my measurements, the image didn't fit. Turns out, instead of writing the measurement for the entire height, I wrote just the measurement for the plastic portion before the circuit board. I got it. Having not known that was the reason, the next day I retook photos with a zoom lens to minimize distortion caused by perspective. I also added a ruler to ensure that the scaling was correct. Then I just went a little bit over the existing design to ensure that the original color is blocked whilst blocking minimal airflow. You could print with paper, then cut with scissors, but since I have laser cutters, I'ma use them. All right, which side is this one? This would be this side. Oh, what? That's bang on. Oh, I love it. That's so good, man. That's like, yes. Oh, I forgot to cut out the holes, the airflow vents. 
Although the goal is to cover the existing color, I need to add the holes to not reduce airflow. And after some minor adjustments, I had perfect profiles for each of the four sides. Remember how Tinkercad had solids and holes? Well, if I export the Inkscape path as an SVG vector file, I can import them into Tinkercad and set that path as a hole. This way, I can cut the custom path from the graphics card rectangle. Why do I keep, I don't know why I'm so surprised, but it won't fit my 3D printer. The card is so tall, so I'm gonna have to split the case in half. If I'm going to cut this in half, I may as well optimize some of the angles for 3D printing and then use those angles for the cut line. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, I rounded the side edges. The original card is chamfered, but I wanted to change this to be smoother. So why not? But being free software, Tinkercad has its limitations. One of which is the quality of curves or the amount of subdivisions of a path. One trick is to import a circle from Inkscape. This will give you a higher quality than the built-in cylinder shape. The difference is minor, but when I slice the 3D model for 3D printing, I notice the smoother curves within the circle edges. Now, just like paint, when we 3D print the mod, we can't change the color of the fan blades. Manufacturers can optimize the material for not only acoustics, but also performance. And if you painted them, you're changing not only the texture, but also the thickness of each blade. Plus, I'm also mindful of the gap between the outer edge of the fan blade and the inner edge of the plastic housing. As if this changes, it could also impact the air friction between those two surfaces, which is why I masked it out when you saw me paint my previous card. Now, I did use Plasti Dip, which is removable. It actually says on the can that you can peel it off. The difference may be minimal, but that's the point. I don't wanna make this look better, but then perform worse, which is why today with the plates, I wanna do some thermal tests when they're on and when they're off to see if there's any impact on performance. I hope these fit. Yeah. I increased the tolerances on the inside a lot more. So there's a bit of wiggle. So I can probably tighten it up a smidge. I think once it's bolted down though, it wouldn't really have much play. You might be thinking, bro, what do you mean bolted down? Oh man, that's perfect. That'll work. We can just use it to screw and hold on our faceplate. Yeah, so I originally planned to create little clips, but this ASUS Tough Card conveniently has screws that I can use. Yes! All right, so that's with it screwed in. See, that bit won't sit down flush. When it moves back a little bit and it sits in place there, that's fine. I'm like, genuinely shocked at like how good that looks. Like I've, I've surprised myself. I was like, yeah, what if you made a phone case for a graphics card? Yeah, what if you did? But something I can't stop thinking about is why hasn't this been done before? Or has it? Looks like ASUS has some 3D printable mods for one of their motherboards, but that was from 2016 and I can't find anything since. But Palette, one of their competitors, has a maker section with pre-designed patterns or completely blank plates for you to 3D print. They even state, as long as you don't disassemble the cooler, thermal, or back plate, it won't break your warranty. Now, if you could only get your hands on one of their cards, then, well, you're in luck. But what if you wanted something with higher performance, like the ASUS Tough Card that I have? I'd love to see this become a normal thing, so you could make any card that you can get match what you've got. Now I printed the prototypes in PLA, which is the most common 3D printing material, but since it has a glass transition temperature or warping temp of 60 degrees, I'm gonna to switch to PETG for the final print, which is 85 degrees. And it shouldn't really matter because we're going around the existing plastic, but it's always best to use the high temperature resistant material if you're going next to high temperature components.
It's free. Man, I'm so excited. All right, let's test it. That is super snug. But that's on. Also very snug now. And also on. No way, bro. That's like, that'll work. The big question is, does adding plates impact performance? Before I removed my old graphics card, I ran some benchmarks. 3D Mark put this new 5070 Ti at an enormous 67.9% increase for gaming over my previous 4070. But when rendering my last video on the Supernote Manta, the 4070 did it in 12 minutes and four seconds, whilst the 5070 Ti, 10 minutes and 13 seconds. So that's just a 15.3% increase in DaVinci Resolve for my content creation. However, what I'm really excited for is the new Dune Awakening game to release. And that gave me an average of 43.9% increase in performance within its benchmark. But does adding plates cut back on any of that performance increase? Well, with an ambient temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, it is summer, the temperature of the plates on or off both hit 66 degrees. No difference in temperature, so no cause thermal throttling of performance. Taking the time to trace the original profile and keeping the fans black would have no doubt helped on minimizing the impact of performance. I changed some straight lines to be angled to optimize for 3D printing without supports, as well as angling the cut line to match the original design and reuse the existing bolts so it blended into the card. Finally, rounding the edges so that it would better blend in to my PC. Bro, it's not gonna fit. Being a longer card, it hit the foot of my custom PC frame. So I needed to laser cut a new bracket to mount it, but that bracket then hit the 3D printed plate. So I had to shave a bit off. You most likely have a normal PC case in which I'm unsure if adding material for a cover plate close to the case mount would interfere. So I've added the download links in the description. It also includes the Tinkercad project. So you can modify the design for the ASUS Tough card if it interferes or the 5080 and 5090 are a bit different. Hopefully today I've helped you with ideas for your own projects. Tag me on IG if you make your own GPU cover. If you like this vid, share it with a mate. And if you loved it, subscribe so I can catch you in the next one.